All right, good morning, everyone, on Thanksgiving morning from Walker Field here in Ashland. It's the last game of the season between the Ashland Clockers and the Hillers of Hopkinton. Paul Burke here along with Bob Thacker as we're just about set to go on an absolutely beautiful Thanksgiving morning. As we said, the finale for both clubs this year, both of them coming in 2-7. and seven. Uh, Both uh, victories, uh, both teams have beaten the same two teams this year, Millis and uh, dover Sherburn. So it looks as if it could be a fairly even match. Now, Paul, it's the 66th uh, meeting between the two teams, one of the oldest rivalries in eastern Massachusetts. Ashland is holding a 32-29 edge, and there have been four ties, including last year, uh, when the clock has scored in the final seconds to make it 14 to 12. Went for the two-point conversion, didn't get it. Flag on the play against Hopkinton, gave him a second chance. They got it in to tie the game which for Ashland last year was the only game they did not lose. They wound up 0-9-1. Uh, this year, as we mentioned, they've won a pair of games, uh, looking for their third win here today. Uh, the Clockers, Paul, the, the difference between these two teams is uh, offense, from what I can see. Uh, they've both given up about the same number of points, playing almost an identical schedule, Tri-Valley League. And uh, But the difference is in the uh, offense where... Uh, the Hoppington Hillers have scored about twice as many points as Ashland. Ashland has 71 points this year, and Hoppington scored 146. Clockers have had a lot of trouble putting the ball in the end zone. In any case, Sean Grant kicking off now, as you can see, and it's going to be a low kick coming down to number 42. That's Scott Cabana. He picks the ball up. He's across the 25-yard line to the 30. 35-yard line, a big hole, and it's going to be an early score in this game. Scott Cabana on the opening kickoff. Scott Cabana! Took it at about his own 25 and scampered 75 yards up the left side. And what a start to this Thanksgiving Day game. 6 0 Hoppington. 12 seconds gone, and Hopkinton on the board as Scott Cabana, number 42, took the opening kick and uh, brought it all the way back for a touchdown. I don't think anyone even touched him. So for the extra point, the kick is up, and it's good. So instantly, Hopkinton is on the board, and they lead 7 to nothing. Wow, what a stack. Tim Doyle, number 24, is uh, the place kicker, which we neglected to mention, but... In any case, instantly, Ashland playing comeback football. Wow. When you look at the, uh, the way the Hoppington Hillers have scored this year, uh, that's their first kickoff that they've run back for a touchdown. Uh, the star of the Hoppington Hillers is their uh, co-captain, uh, Heath Walker, with 12 touchdowns this year. Uh, and an amazing uh, 10 of those have come via the pass route. He's caught 10 passes from the quarterback, uh, Jeff Kenny, this year for touchdowns. He's run one back, and he ran a punt return back also for a touchdown. Scott Cabana, that's his fourth touchdown of the year. He's really come on the second half of the season for the Hillers. <laughs> who haven't lost to Ashland since 1985 when the clock has beat him over in Hoppington. All right, Doyle kicks it off. A nice spiral kick pushing Boudreaux and Merloni back. The ball in the end zone. Merloni picks it up. And uh, they're going to call it for a touchback. So Ashen will put the ball in play at their own 20-yard line. Paul, the Clockers are using uh, two quarterbacks today, according to Coach Allen Richards. He's going to be using uh, Brian Bloggenstainer and Craig Pandolfi, and they'll both be in the backfield quite often at the same time as they are uh, now. And it's Bloggenstainer at quarterback right now, and he has Merloni and Massaro behind him, uh, along with Pandolfi in a wishbone formation. The handoff is to number 36, Pandolfi, and he's hit immediately and dropped. Uh, there's a flag on the play, a couple of flags on the play, right around the line of scrimmage. And I, what, what was the signal, offside? I didn't see I it. I believe. Pandolfi and uh, Blockenstein are both freshmen. And Blockenstein is taking his first varsity snaps. Pandolfi played last week. 
and did very well against Medfield in a game that uh, the clock has lost 22 to 14, a game where they had a 14 nothing lead. Five yard walk off, so it'll be re remain first down. It'll be first and five now as the ball was spotted at the 25 yard line. Pandolfi now is over uh, center. He has Blagenstainer uh, in the slot. Massaro in motion. Uh, the handoff is inside to Massaro, I believe. Let's see. Yes, indeed. Massaro goes nowhere again. Number 22, Frank Massaro. A loss on the play, it would appear, of about uh, three yards, so that'll back it up. It'll be second down and seven. Well, if they're going to be trying some uh, passing today, they did not pass much uh, in their last game against Medway. Uh, very windy Saturday. Pandolfi only threw about three passes. So he's untested passing. Looks like they're in a shotgun now, though. And the handoff to Merloni, trying to sweep left, trying to turn the corner. He does get outside, and finally he's hit and knocked out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Um, and let's see, I believe he's got the first down. I think he had to get across the 30, he had a, That's right, he had to cross the 30, so he did indeed get the first down. Slow to move those chains. There's the signal by the ref. There we go. Coach Al Richards, uh, no secret to anyone, as he told the uh, newspapers, we're going to try to break Maloney on a couple of long runs, and we're going to try to stop Heath Walker from Hawkington, and that's how we're going to try to win this game. Well, they very nearly turned Maloney in, but they failed at the last moment as he picked up the first down yardage by just under a yard. Uh, handoff. Massaro. To Massaro, trying to sweep, and he picks up perhaps a yard or two before he's taken down. Massaro, uh, Merloni, the big gun, number 24 for Ashland. He has uh, eight touchdowns this year. Actually, he has seven, and he's passed for one from the uh, halfback on the halfback option play. Ashland only has ten touchdowns. Merloni has uh, seven of them. And Boudreaux has the other three. Ryan Boudreaux, number 80. Second and nine situation. Handoff. Handoff on the reverse to Boudreaux goes nowhere. Late flag. And a late flag thrown in. Thrown in. Was it a face mask in the tackle? Oh, uh, well, I can't say his back was to us as he was hit, so I, it, it's tough to say, but... Uh, Looks like an inadvertent flag is going to be the call. So the loss was of uh, about five yards, so it'll be third down now and 15 to go. Ashland pushed back to their own 26-yard line. And, you know, an obvious passing situation, I would say. Let's see what happens. I think we're going to see what uh, Pandolfi can do now because he's going to take this snap, I think. Pandolfi back to throw, flags it down, throws it out. It's complete out there to Massaro with running room. Massaro down the left sideline, across midfield, and finally taken out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. But there are flags in the backfield against Ashland. It's coming back. Nice pass and run play, but it's going to come back on an illegal motion call. One of Frank Massaro's longest gains of the year is coming back on that illegal motion. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of raffles going on as we usually do. Too bad. No, it's okay. Beautifully designed play. And well executed. That went for about 25 yards. Unfortunately for the clockers, it's coming back. And here they go. They're ready to try it again, only this time. It'll be about third and a mile. It'll be close to third and 20. From the shotgun, it's Pandolfi with time. Throws complete to Maloney. Tripped up at about the 27-yard line. So Ashland uh, will be in an obvious punting situation. He had time, which is something we haven't seen an Ashland quarterback have much the last couple of years, but he had time to throw that, and he did complete it, but Maloney just tripped up before he could get uh, running. Grant back to punt. Heath Walker, number 34, is back deep for the Hillers. 
the snap, the kick, and it's going to be off the side of his foot, and it's going to pounce out of bounds at about the 45-44 yard line of uh, Hopkinton where they'll take over. Another problem with Ashland's possession in that situation, by the way, is uh, they were burned immediately. They were down 7 to nothing after the opening kickoff was returned for a touchdown. And in that situation, Bob, they actually held the ball for over three minutes. They picked up a first down and got absolutely nothing out of it. Flags and you can't. Well, they did. And you can't, uh, in this game, you can't kill off three minutes out of a quarter uh, and uh, do nothing with it and expect uh, good results from it. However, this will be the first play from scrimmage for Hopkinton coming up. Jeff Kenny at quarterback, number 13. Back to throw. Throws it out deep. Here's it out for Walker. And it's just over his fingertips. Just out of his reach. He had beaten Jared Savage on the coverage. And had he held on to the ball, had he gotten to the ball, he could have been off real quickly for another score. That's the combination Hopkinton's been using all year. Uh, Jeff Kenny, the quarterback, who was the fourth-string quarterback, incidentally, until injuries and other problems uh, elevated him to first string, uh, has thrown 11 touchdown passes this year, and 10 of them have been to the co-captain Heath Walker, number 34. That's their winning combination. Kenny's also run for a touchdown. Scott Cabana, number 42 and 45, Matt Enright in the backfield. A throw again. It's Kenny, and it's almost picked off in there by, uh, by Boudreau. Almost picked off as uh, Kenny was either hit or the ball slipped out of his hand as he went to throw it. Something was wrong with that pass ball. A lot was wrong with that pass. In any event, no harm done from Ashland's perspective, so it'll be third down and 10 yards to go following two incompletions. Kind of surprised Ryan. I think he would have had it. Hawking and Hillers, and they're visiting white with the forest green numerals. Ashland wearing their home royal blue. Flag down. Kenny to throw. Complete to number... Uh, can't see. Beg your pardon. Short of the first down, but flags are down. Was that Cabana? Went to number 22, Paul. I don't see a 22 on the list, unfortunately. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Brian Libby may be using that number. Yeah. He was listed in the starting backfield. Offside call against Ashland, so... They'll move the ball five yards, so it'll be third down and five. Probably a passing down for a passing team like Hopkinton. We'll see. Handoff inside to Cabana. Big hole. Another flag. Another flag in the backfield as Cabana breaks it into Ashland territory. He stopped at about the 42-yard line. But a late flag, and I believe it's going to go against Hopkinton. It's holding against Hopkinton. Holding? Ball. Okay. In the blocking. In the backfield, the Hoffington Hiller backfield. Penalty filled first period. So far. Six minutes, 25 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Hoffington leading 7 0 as it was Scott Cabana who took the opening kickoff approximately 80 yards for a touchdown. Gorgeous day at Harold Grump Walker Field, Nashland High School. Third and 17, the ball on the Hopkinton 35-yard line. Number 22, Libby, flanked out on the right side. The handoff to Cabana has a big hole over the left side, cuts it in, gets it across midfield, and he's very close to the first down. Very close. Let's see. It is, a is indeed down. a first down. Ashland experiencing the problem they, they've had for the past two seasons. Uh, they, you know, they cannot stop the run. And Hoffington's a passing team, but they're using the run to great advantage. Clockers have been doing better against the run and have been pretty tough against the pass lately. Hand off again to Cabana. And this time he's finally tripped up as he crosses the 35-yard line to about the 34. Cabana, a sophomore, mind you. A sophomore. 
Huge holes on the right side. They're running behind Keith Walker, number 34, Paul Flannery, number 69, and Dan Desolates, number 64. Cabana in and right in the backfield, and this is Enright, another big hole, and Enright plows forward to the 25-yard line where he's uh, stopped, to the 20-yard line, the 20-yard line, where they will spot it. It'll be another first down. Matt Enright, four touchdowns this year, all on the run. Hand off to Enright, and pushes forward for about another four or five yards. Four yards it is, it'll be second and six. And the ball is spotted ar around the 16 yard line. Talking to moving well on offense. Wasting no time getting up to that line of scrimmage. The I formation. The pitch to Cabana trying to sweep left. He has blockers, gets around Boudreaux, and is finally hauled down from the back. And coming over to get him with Heath, Heath Coxell, number 89, on the tackle. Coxell a stalwart all year on the Ashland defense. But another gain as they move the ball marker. It'll be a gain of about four, so call it uh, third down now and about two yards to go for first down. The first down would take them just about to the 10-yard line. Kenny hands it off. Cabana trying to go over the right side. This time he's hit, but let's see. Uh, first down. It appears that he's got it. It appears that he's got it. Let's see what they say. Yes, indeed. He, no, they're going to. No, first down. First down. First, no. Well, they've moved the chains. Yeah, I saw oh. the signal for the first down. All right, first down. Referee making very fast signals. Yeah. Right after the play, he signals the penalty yeah. or a first down. Hopping with a lot of confidence now. And they should. First and goal now. Kenny Tripp's trying to go back, throws it out. It's complete, and it's going to go for a touchdown. Number 24, Tim Doyle. Timmy Doyle. <laughs> That's his second touchdown of the year. Well, Kenny tripped going back uh, from the line of scrimmage, but regained his footing real quickly. Yeah, it worked out well for them. It really didn't, uh, didn't it hurt at all. became part of the rollout. Yeah. Uh, this is Doyle now to add the extra point. Ball is spotted. The kick is up, and it's good. So with three minutes, 15 seconds left in the first quarter, the score is Hopkinton, 14, Ashland, nothing. Wow. Hopkinton Hillers have come out and taken it right to the clockers. Let's see a replay on that touchdown, Paul. You watch Kenny go back. Now he'll stumble just a tad, as you can see right there. Rolls to his right, flicks it out, and uh, it's Doyle who is wide, wide open, and just took the ball and walked in. Clock has had very little pressure on the quarterback. And I think that had, that hurt the uh, pass defense. So the Hillers striking early and often. Have a 14-0 lead with 3.15 left in the first period. Coming to you from Walkerfield and Ashland. The annual Thanksgiving Day game between uh, the neighboring towns of Hoppington and and Ashland. This is the 66th game. In a rivalry that dates back to 1924. All right, Doyle's kick is going to be handed, fielded up uh, close, but uh, pitched back to Maloney. Maloney with a hole. Maloney with one guy to beat. Won't quite do it, but gets the ball out to the 45-yard line. Now, there's a guy so explosive, you've got to say he can do it any time. And almost did. He was just about a step short of breaking that play. But Ashland will take over possession in very good field position at their own 45-yard line. And, uh, you know, this is a situation they have to score. 
Yeah, and those kickoffs, the Hillers are trying to keep it away from Maloney, and the clock is making sure it gets into his hands as they pitch back to him. All right, now Pandolfi is over center at quarterback. Blog and Stainer in the slot. The pitch back to Maloney. Tries to turn the corner real quickly. Stays on his feet. Breaks the tackle. Finally is hauled down as he crosses the 45-yard line of uh, Hopkinton. So that'll be a first down. Twelve yard pickup. Well, the Clockers have loved that play all year, and the uh, the key to it obviously is springing him very quickly, so that he doesn't have to waste a lot of steps on lateral movement. And that time they were successful. Now this time, Bloggenstainer comes to the slot on the left side as Pandolfi is uh, over center, calling signals. Pandolfi with it, fakes the pitch, hands it off inside to Massaro. Massaro picks up about four. As uh, they're going to spot the ball at about the, let's see, 41-yard line. So it'll be second down and about uh, seven yards to go. They spot it at the 42. So it'll be second down and seven. Frank Massaro getting some action today, Paul. Well, Massaro was the unknown number for many, many games this year. And, uh, you know, frankly, you finally reach a point where you've got to go to the, the people you have. Just plain have to. No, nope. Bloggenstainer at quarterback. Pitch to Maloney. He wants to throw. Now he's going to run. And he's going to get uh, hit and taken down. May have lost the yard. Now that, that play was designed. That was an option play. He looked. He looked. I didn't. Uh, I can't say that I did. I don't know who was out there. If, uh, or how. Boudreaux's side of the field. Yeah. He's the number one receiver. Number 80, Ryan Boudreaux. Well, only got by one man, but couldn't get by the second. Lost about a yard, third and eight. Here they come. Pandolfi will take the snap. Paul. Pandolfi to throw, rolling left, rolling left, unloads it. Intended out there for Coxell, and it's incomplete. Coxell was open. He had beaten his man, and the ball was overthrown as uh, he looked back over both shoulders and was also, I might say, looking into a bad sun, but... Uh, the ball was overthrown and incomplete. It didn't look to me like he ever saw that ball. Really? He, 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 looked, he looked over both shoulders. Right, but, and, he, uh, but he wasn't running at all as the pass came down. It didn't, I don't think he saw it. So the drive fizzles with a minute 16 left here in the first quarter, and Grant's going to kick it away as they send Heath Walker, number 34, back deep to take the kick. A good snap. Grant gets off a nice kick, a nice kick, and it's covered by Walker and down uh, at about the, somewhere between, the, around the 10-yard line. Let's take a look. Okay, it'll be around, call it this, the uh, 11, around the 12-yard line. Clock is with some field position for the first time in a while. Got the Hillers down there deep. Good time to start playing some defense. Clockers, uh, Clockers are missing Andy Berman on defense today. He may play a little. He's number 60. Jeff Morris out with a broken foot as well. Ryan Boudreau taking his place. Kenny's handoff to Cabana instantly as he's hit, stays on his feet, carries the ball out to about the 23, 24-yard line before he's finally taken to the turf. Cabana was... appears to be the man on the ground today, to say the least. They spotted it at the 24. It's a first down. I got him for about 45 yards already. Now the clock is running with 45 seconds left here in the first quarter. They bring Brian Libby wide on the right side, number 22. Kenny hands it off again. This is Enright with a big haul. Enright out to the 38-39 yard line. The left side of that pillar line really doing a job on the clockers. Chris Little, number 75, Keith Lee, 71, and the co-captain, Tim Doyle, number 24. First down again for Hopkinton. Handed off inside to Enright again. 
Hurdles a tackler, comes forward into Ashland territory, and it'll be spotted around the 49-yard line. Again, a first down. Three plays, three first downs. That one went right up the middle. Nothing fancy here, Paul. No. Clock is half to stiffen on defense here. They're getting chewed up on the ground. And Coach Allen Richards wants to talk it over, or is that the end of the quarter? That's the end, the end of the end quarter. quarter. All right, at the end of a quarter here at Walker Field, the score is Hopkinton 14 and Ashland nothing. Not a good start for the Clarkers, Paul. Didn't look good in the first period. Not playing with a lot of emotion either. And, uh, well, I, I think uh, I think they were instantly stunned by the run back of the opening kickoff, but uh, you know it's it's a long game. That play took 12 seconds, That's and right. uh, you know you've got to find the opportunity to stiffen up, as you say, and play the game. Hoppington's done well this year scoring. They, they, they've scored a lot of points. They scored 140 points. They had 21 touchdowns coming into this game. Uh, they've given up a lot of points though. So I, I looked for a, a fairly high scoring game here and so far it has been, but I hope Ashland gets some of those points. Well, uh, also bear in mind, Ashland twice has, has uh, tried to throw and twice has had guys open enough that they could have carried the ball in and twice the passes have been overthrown. Boudreaux the first time and then uh, Coxell just a few moments ago. Uh, both guys were open, but in both situations the balls were overthrown and uh, fell incomplete. Okay, here we go. Kenny hands off to Cabana, breaks a tackle in the backfield, and falls forward to about the 46-yard line. So that'll be a pickup of three. It'll be second down, seven yards to go. I will say a nice contingent of fans out here today, too. Dave Britton came close to having a sack there. Just slipped through. Kenny calling signals, hands it off to Enright, finds some daylight, and he pops through for about a four-yard gain. Let's see where they spot it. And it's going to be at the 40, uh, about the 43-yard line, so a gain of one maybe. It'll be third down, third down and about five. Hopkinton apparently content to keep the ball on the ground in this situation, so let's see what they do. Hands it off to Cabana. He's hit behind the line and tackled. And in fact, fumble. Loose football. Ash Ashland has the ball. How about that? They finally found Cabana. Hit him behind the line of scrimmage. I confess I didn't see the ball pop loose, but quite clearly it did. So it'll be Ashland first and 10. And again, they take over in good field position at the 45-yard line of Hopkinton. They had him stopped on that third down play too, Paul, uh, whether they retain possession or not. They had him stopped. They had him stopped. The only time, the first time today that they've stopped him. Good defense can make breaks for you. And that's what happened right there. So, so you, better field position, no punt. Yeah, really. If you figure if they had turned around and punted, that would have been at least 20, 25 yards additional uh, uh, for Ashland to make up. Okay, here we go. It's Pandolf, your quarterback. Pandolfi delays, uh, rolling right, rolling right, turns the corner and brings it forward to the Ashland 46-yard line. So that's about a nine-yard pickup for Pandolfi. He's in Hoppington territory at the 46. Almost a first down. That play was run all the way, Paul, as I saw it. Yeah, I think so, too. I, uh, you know, for a moment it looked like it might be an option, but then, no, I think it was just a plain quarterback keep. There's so many people in the Ashland backfield. They're lining up with, uh, well, now they spread it out. They show pass. Let's see what they do, second and short. Yeah, it's pitched to Maloney, cuts it inside, has the first down, and then some as he breaks loose. And he's got to beat one guy. He won't quite do it. But Maloney takes it down to the 20-yard line. 25-yard pickup, Jamie Maloney. Good blocking by the clockers up front. Let's we'll watch see. that big one again, Paul. Cuts inside. Cuts inside. He needed the first down, but this is where he broke tackles and finally uh, actually would have had to get by about three guys. But uh, 
Super run by super running by Jamie Merloni. They spotted at the 23-yard line where it's first and 10. Now this is Bloggenstainer at quarterback. His handoff to Merloni, looking for a hole and not going to find much. Maloney does not go down easily. Always looking for that extra yard. On the preceding play, you saw he could have run it out of bounds. There was no way he was going to get too far, but still he stopped. He wanted to cut it inside to get some more yards. And we got an injured Ashland player down on the field. Let's see if I can get his number. Let's see who's missing, Paul. Is it Blagenstein? Number 34. They're looking at his knee, mm. left knee. I think it's it's not Blagenstein. It's not Merloni. Coffee and hot chocolate is going fast at the refreshment stand, ladies and gentlemen. Use the break in the action to warm yourself up. Get a refreshment. It's Dave Britton, Paul, number 68. Going to take a breather. He looks all right, though. Yeah. Number 72 is going to take his place, Paul. Uh, Keen Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy. I can tell you if it was Britain, uh, it, it was Britain. I can name a basketball coach whose heart just went into his mouth. They're counting on Dave to play center this year on the basketball team. I hope so. All right, here we go. Now uh, the play before we actually went for about four yards, so it'll be second down and six. As they come out, it's Pandolfi at quarterback on this sequence. Calling signals. Pitch to Merloni, rolling left, rolling left, being chased. Now there's a flag down. Merloni drops the ball. Let's see. I think Hopkinton covered. There's a flag on the play. Hopkinton did recover that fumble. Merloni was contained. And a call. On the right side. And it's a holding call against Dashlin. It'll be declined, and Hopkinton takes over. How about that? Disaster strikes the clock as deep in Hiller territory. One of the few fumbles by Jamie Maloney this year. Usually very reliable. You know, the Hopkinton Hillers will now take over at about the 19 yard line. 18, 19 yard line. Well, let's see if they go right to Cabana again here deep in their own territory. Flags every place. Uh, the handoff that time was to Enright, I believe. Yes, indeed, it was Enright as he broke it across the 25 to about the 27. But let's see what the flags are. Looks like it's against Ashland, and the Hillers are going to have to make a decision whether they want the play or the penalty. They took the play. Clock running now, less than eight minutes to go in the half. So that was a nine yard pickup. It'll be second down and a yard to go. Matt Enright, unofficially 55 yards on seven carries. This is the handoff to Cabana coming left and he's hit, he's dropped, but not before he picks up the first down as he crosses the 30 yard line and brings it out to about the 32. All right, they spotted at the 33 where it'll be first and 10. Seven and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Hopkinton leading in the game 14 to nothing. Hopkinton offense has been the difference today so far, Paul. Long way to go, though. Handoff and right, hit in the backfield and running laterally, turns the corner. And finally, he's going to be ridden out of bounds as he crosses the 40-yard line, ridden out at about the 43, and that's also very close to first down. 
And it is a first down, first and 10, as they spot it at the 43-44 yard line. Jared Savage, number 82, shoved him out for Ashland. Another first down? Yes, sir. Well, Hopkinton's st statistical edge certainly continues to mount, I would say. Using Enright and Cabana. That's Enright again. Enright almost to midfield at the 49. He's hit and taken down. You know, the Hillers uh, had the same record as Ashland. They were both 2-7 and seven this year, both 2-5 and five in the league. But they lost several games in the final minutes where they had leads and uh, let the game slip away. So they're a little better than a 2-7 and seven ball club, and they're the favorites today in this showing it. You know, they're seeing why. Draw. This is Cabana as he surges to another first down, it would appear. Very close. They didn't give him that last little spin. You know, they're going to mark it about a foot short. No, now they say first down. First down for the Referee says to the headlinesman, who are you? <laughs> That's a first down. <laughs> he's not hesitating. He's not no. measuring. He's calling him as he sees him. So the Hillers operate from Ashland's 46-yard line. This is Jeff Kenny at quarterback. First throw in a long time. Airs it out deep. It's intended out there for Brian Libby. Tremendous and catch. It's, it's caught. Tremendous <laughs> catch. Inside the 10. No. Nope. On the 10. He went high in the air to snag that one. Let's watch this one again, Paul. Aired it out down the right side and watch Libby leap for that ball. Beautiful catch. Here we go, back live. Kenny hands it off to Cabana, sweeping left, gets the block, turns the corner, and touchdown! Number 42, Scott Cabana on the touchdown. Well, that sends it to 20 to nothing. And Doyle's going to try to make it 21. Kick is up. And uh, they're not kick pretty, is good. But they're, they're not good. Pretty, but they're effective. <laughs> so about five minutes, 33 seconds left to go here in the half. And Hopkinton has pulled ahead to a 21-0 lead. Scott Cabana and Matt Enright, the stories thus far, Paul. I've got Cabana for 70 yards on eight carries. And I have Enright for 70 yards on 10 carries. Not bad averages either. Yeah, they're getting about 10 yards a, a rip. Hill is pretty much doing whatever they want on offense. The Clockers have had their moments. They've been close once. They've had first downs on all of their three possessions. Punted twice and gave it up once on a fumble. Well, you know, it was the, uh, it was the fumble that hurt because uh, it was Merloni who fumbled down around the 25-yard line of Hopkinton when Ashland was on a drive that could really have taken them in. And it was in the wake of that fumble that this last drive ensued. Okay, again, the kick is going to come deep toward Ryan Boudreau. And no, did it go out of bounds? Oh, boy, it looks like he carried it out. If he carried it out, it's going to be... It's going to be Ashland Ball. In fact, that's what did happen. So it'll be Ashland Ball down at around the, uh, where? Inside the 15-yard line. Call it the 14. Very hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like a Maybe the 12. Maybe the 13-12, yeah. right, okay. 
poor field position. Uh, Ryan must have picked that one up and then realized he was out of bounds. Logenstainer at quarterback. Hands it off to Maloney, trying to turn the corner. Finally is hit out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. 20, 25-yard line, let's, let's see. 25-yard line, okay. And it's a first down. 13-yard gain. Nice pickup for Maloney. And he won't take it out of bounds. He always takes the hit. He took two hard hits there. Been lucky to avoid injury this year. A little better field position, and uh, Lagenstein is going to take this snap ball. Okay. Lagenstein are rolling, keeping, keeping, cuts it upfield, has a little hole, and he pulls forward. Let's see. To about the 32, 33 yard line. Am I right? Yep. Hard to say. Around the 34 yard line. A well, nice pickup of about nine yards. So it'll be second down in a yard. They showed a little bit of an option on that, but I think it was a run all the way for the quarterback. Well, coming to the short side of the field, there's not much room to pitch anyway, so. Wagenstainer again hands it off to uh, Massaro, and this play is going no place. He marked his forward progress up near the line of scrimmage. He might have even got a half a yard. Now, well, if he did, he then not much. Let's see. And the Hillers want a timeout. Indeed, they do. So there is a timeout on the field. The uh, Hillers have a timeout here. They're leading comfortably, 21 to nothing. 4:36 left in the half on Thanksgiving Day at Walker Field in Ashland. Clock is ready to go. They've got a third. Looks like about a third and one at their own 35. I would call this a key play in the game because uh, if they miss here, they, I'm sure, have to kick. And they're going to come straight ahead, the quarterback keep. Jeez, I think he got it. And I think he did. Just the line surge you would hope would push him forward. Well, I can stay. That was, uh, it is first down. Was that Bloggenstein or Pendolfi? I thought it was, but in any case, it's a first down for Ashland. Ball at the 37-yard line, first and 10. Now this is Brian Bloggenstein at quarterback. Flags down, throws it out to Boudreau, and it's complete to Boudreau! And he's to about the 30-yard line, to the 31-yard line of Hawkinson, but a flag on the play. Did I see it? I thought I saw a flag. Yes, there's a flag down. It's against Ashland. And it's coming back. <clears throat> a shame, a beautiful play, a nice reception by Boudreaux. Good pass by Blagenstainer. Took the snap and just let it go, and Blagenstainer and uh, Boudreaux caught up with it for the reception. Second time that a big Ashland gain has been called back on an illegal motion penalty. And the clock has haven't been bad this year with penalties, but no. uh, today it's really hurt them. And everyone is hurt. So now we have first down and 15. Pitch back to Merloni, he's hitting the backfield. Uh, they're gonna call it a loss of one. So it'll be third down and 16. Logenstein are bringing the plays in from Coach Allen Richards. A passing formation, it would appear, as uh, Blogenstainer goes into the slot on the left side. Boudreaux is out there. Pandolfi back to throw. Has some time. Has some time. Throws it out, and it's incomplete. 
Intended receiver apparently was Heath Coxell, the tight end, uh, coming into the middle, but it was uh, over his hands, and frankly, I think that they were fairly lucky that the ball wasn't picked off. So that'll bring up a third, third down situation. Third and 16. Well, this is what you'd have to call a passing down. Unless they're gonna let Merloni try to sweep left. Let's see what they do. A long way to sweep. <laughs> to throw, Pandolfi. Lots of time. Has it out to Merloni, and it's gonna be picked off. It's uh, number 24, Tim Doyle on the interception. Doyle took it right out of Maloney's hands. That pass was right on the money, but the bigger player, Tim Doyle. Exactly. Took it right out of his hands. Used his height and weight advantage to snag that interception. So an, another tough turnover for Ashland as Hopkinton takes control of the ball in Ashland territory at about the 43-yard uh, line. Two minutes, 45 seconds left to go here in the first half. Hopkinton in the lead, 21 to nothing. And they should keep it on the ground here. They don't want anything to go wrong with their lead, but no, they're going to pass. They're going to throw. Kenny airs it out deep, intended out there for Libby. Complete. Libby finally taken down at around the 4-3-2 yard line. What a beautiful pass. Jared Savage caught up with him. Let's watch this one again. This was a beautifully thrown ball by Jeff Kenny. Plenty of time. Let's it go. Wide open. Wide open was Libby. And Savage saved a, a touchdown down around the two. Brian Libby, number 22, having himself a day. Two long receptions. So it's first and goal. Kenny wants to throw again, throws it out, and it's incomplete. Uh, let's see. Intended out there for, uh, let's see. Intended out there apparently for Matt Enright, number 45. It's strange they'd be passing here. Kenny again to throw, flips it out, complete touchdown to number 24, Tim Doyle. Couldn't have been easier. No. Nope. Just popped it right over the oh, center's head. That's right. Doyle all alone. You know, Doyle walks about two yards into the end zone, jumps up and the ball's there. And Not a tough play. And he doesn't even get tackled. That's what I can't figure out. He got bumped a little, but they couldn't even bring him down. So the lead is now 27-0 as Doyle goes for the extra point, and it's good. So with two minutes, nine seconds left in the half, the score is Hopkinton 28, Ashland nothing. Hill is doing whatever they want on offense. Uh, the clock, the Hillers are a 2-7 and seven team, but uh, uh, they're playing Ashland tougher than... Uh, than Westwood or Holliston or any of the powers. Let's see a replay of that touchdown if we can now as we get ready for the Hopkinton kickoff. Here it is. Just crawls over the line of scrimmage yeah. and right there, and it's over. Well, look at, looking back on some of, some of the scores, Bob, against Weston, for example, Ashland lost by 30, Hopkinton lost by two. Yeah, they played uh, Weston very tough. Against Holliston, Holliston, Ashland crushed 44-0. Against Topkinton, the score was 27-13. And that was a and, good ball uh, game. And it was a good game. And, and uh, uh, against Westwood, Ashland loses 40-7. Uh, Hopkinton loses 40-31. Yeah, that was a, that was a, you know, they were in that game all the way. So they, as I said earlier, they could have had a much better record this year. A little luck in the last couple minutes of a few ball games. Boudreaux. Doyle, Doyle's kick again to Boudreaux at the 10. 
who drove up the field to the 25-yard line where he's uh, going to be hit and taken down. Let's see where they spot it as Ashland takes over first and 10. They spot it across the 25 at about the 27-yard line. Okay. Coach Dave Hughes, in his 13th year as head coach of the Hillers, good record of 75, 42, and 3. Hillers were last champs of the TVL in 1983. Here go the clocks. This is Blog and Stainer. Pitches back to Merloni, and he's hammered. That hit back around the 21 yard line. So that'll be a loss of uh, about five yards. Could be second down and 15. Hiller defense stiffening up. Jared Savage checks in. Well, you know, Bob, as we've mentioned so many times this season, uh, after about 10 minutes of play, the teams figure out that the main man is Merloni, and once you find him, you've taken away a big part of Ashland's offensive uh, prowess. Now they're going to have to throw it. Snap to Pandolfi, he has time, he airs it out, and it's going to be picked off again. Picked off by Cabana. Cabana coming to the 30, uh, to the 35 yard line, 36 yard line, and it's going to be first and 10 for Hopkinton. Again, Paul, not a badly thrown ball. It was there just slightly over the head of Blagenstainer, but right on the money. Uh, and I'd have to say Blagenstainer's uh, size there hurt him. Yeah, well, you know, really a, a small quarterback and a small receiver, and it's uh, just not a good combination. I mean, and not against the Scott Cabana, number 42. This is a big kid. They want to throw. Kenny to throw. Has the time. Here's it out, and it's going to be complete to Tom, to Tim Doyle. Touchdown. Jeff Kenny's showing a beautiful uh, touch on those long passes. That's three uh, three completions in excess of 30 yards, and the Hillers have blown this one open. Again, nobody near Doyle. He had beaten everybody down the field, and, uh, you know, frankly, from the moment the ball was thrown, you could see that they were going to connect. It was just a question of whether or not Doyle would hold it, and he did. So just like that, it's 34 to nothing, Hopkinton. And the kick is up, and uh, no good. Pushed it off to the right. And that was one of his best kicks. That's, that was a good-looking <laughs> kick. We'll see the touchdown again. And uh, just watch if you, if you can. Now, here's Kenny to throw, but watch where Doyle is. He's going to be alone, just alone. Right in his hands. Uh, Perfectly beautifully, thrown ball. Beautifully thrown ball right in his hands. And again, he just had to walk into the end zone with it. A great day for the Hill is a great first half. 34 points in the first half, and still a minute three left. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery by Hawkington today thus far. And they've cashed those very nicely. Well, for Doyle, that was, uh, uh, what, two touchdowns and one extra point. So that was, what, 13 points in about, uh, what, 45 seconds, give or take, maybe wow. a minute. What a day he's having. Timmy Doyle, number 24. Here's Doyle's kickoff, a low liner this time. It's going to come to Boudreaux down around the 12-yard line. Boudreaux cuts it upfield, trying to come left. He's going to be hit, and he's going to be stacked up as he reaches the 20-yard line. So with 57 seconds left in the half, Ashland takes over, first and 10. We'll see where they spot it. Uh, call it right uh, just over the 20-yard line, around the 21. Fresh, freshman quarterbacks, uh, Pandolfi and Blagenstein are getting a real test today. And they, they've played well. Those interceptions, those passes were on the money, but just... Uh, Matter of a few inches resulted in two interceptions. And this is Blogenstainer. Hands it off to Pandolfi. Um, and Craig picks up two or three yards. So they'll spot it around the 23-yard line. It'll be second down and uh, eight yards to go. 
Clock running, 37 seconds left in the half. Wagenstainer going back to the huddle now with the play. Clock is not bothering to use any timeouts here, down 34 to nothing. All right, they send Boudreau wide left. Um, and uh, Blogenstainer out there in the slot. Merloni in the backfield along with Massaro. The handoff to Merloni finally comes through and breaks it upfield to about the 24-yard line where it'll be third down now and about two yards to go. And that should be it as the clock is going to run down to nothing. And as we end the first half, the score at Walker Field is Hopkinton 34, Ashland nothing.